Hey everybody, it's Travis here. In the past we've taken a look at different types of modeling and we've usually done solid modeling with uh, Inventor. Today I want to take a look at a little bit more hybrid form using surfaces and solids. So as we take a look here in our model browser we've got a solid here and some extruded surfaces as well. You can also see the difference in the icons here in the model browser for a solid extrusion with the yellow and the blue icon and these tan colored extrusions for the surfaces. So when you expand these you see the sketch and there's a sketch for the revolution and you see a slightly different icon for that revolution as well. So I'll bring those back to their current state and we'll start removing some geometry using these surfaces. So I have extrusion in place for solid and I want to actually start taking geometry away. So I'm going to use the sculpt tool out of the surface tab and it's going to ask me what mode I want so I'm going to use the remove and then it's going to ask me which surfaces do I want to use well I can highlight them in here in the model space or I can come over to my actual model browser and start selecting the surfaces here you'll notice as you start to select them you get a highlighted preview of the geometry that's going to be taken away from the solid so I know that these are the three extrusions I want to use, I just don't want it to be in that direction. So if you zoom in here, you'll see that there's a little green arrow denoting the direction that this sculpt is happening. If I click on this one here, it's going to change that over. So now that I have the highlighted preview that I want, I can click OK, and it removes some of that geometry. But here I still have these pieces out front that need to go away as well. But where are the surfaces? Well, if you expand this sculpt feature, similar to the way that your other features consume the sketch, the sculpt has consumed the other features created from the surface sketches. So I'm going to start my sculpt again, and I'm going to go back to the remove function, and then I'm going to select this last surface, and as you notice, it's already in the direction that I want. So I'll hit OK, and it takes out that last bit of geometry that I want to remove using these extrusions. So the next step, we're going to apply some fillets to make this a little bit more smooth. I'm going to make this radius 40 millimeters, and I'm going to choose these two right here, and give that a nice curved edge, and I'll hit the green check mark to accept that. I'm going to add one more fillet down here in the crease, and I want to change that radius to 80 millimeters. I'll hit OK and accept that. And we're going to do one more fillet, but this one's going to be a little bit different. It's going to have multiple radius, so you choose the variable function. And I'm going to choose my path here for that fillet. And notice when you drag the cursor along the path of the fillet, you get a yellow dot showing where that point is. So I'm going to choose this green one right here. And I'm going to change up these radii. I'm going to choose 60 for the first one and then the end I'm going to make that 120 and then this midpoint here I'm going to choose 50 for that and as you can see we've got a nice smooth transitioning fillet all the way along that path so I'll hit OK and now we have that nice fillet in place now the next thing what I want to do is remove a little bit more geometry in this section right here so if you hadn't noticed already we've got another sketch at the end of our features so I'm just going to move my end of part feature down below that sketch and now we can see it in the model space. So I'm going to come up to the split tool in the modify panel and I'm going to choose trim solid. Now that I have my solid highlighted and I can see what I'm working with, I'm going to select my sketch and again you'll notice that I've got this highlighted preview of what's going to happen here but if I move that over just a little bit, you see this direction arrow that's saying it's going to remove the geometry on the bottom side. I want it to go the other way, so I hit this direction arrow in the dialog box and hit OK. Now you notice that that geometry is gone as well, and we can make the other half of our seat. So I'm just going to bring this back to a nice isometric view, and I'm going to use the mirror tool to do that. So you have two different ways of mirroring. You can mirror individual features or you can mirror the entire solid. This is the option that we want to choose here. So now that my solid is highlighted 
it just needs a mirror plane. So if I come down to that center mirror plane, then we'll just choose that and you see again another preview for the geometry that will appear after we say OK. So last but not least, I don't need all this bulk for the seat, I just more or less need this nice curvy part in the middle. So more or less we need a shell of what appears here. So I'm going to use the shell command and I'm going to start selecting all the faces that I don't want to be there afterwards. So you can just come around and select all those faces, no need to press control, it just keeps adding them to the list. And I think we've got everything that we need. So I'll hit OK. It does a little thinking and now I should have a nice seat. One last thing we'll do before we shut it down, we'll change this over to something a little more interesting. Let's see what we've got in here. Maybe make this carbon fiber. So now we've got an interesting material on our interestingly formed seat. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Hybrid Modeling with iDesign.